All right, welcome back from that report. While renewable energy can provide reliable electricity, the initial investment for systems like solar photovoltaics is often seen as a barrier to SMEs. Innovative payment models and financing options could alleviate this challenge, and increasing awareness of renewable technologies may encourage adoption. The main obstacle to renewable energy as a viable alternative during power outages is the perceived high cost. By reducing the financial burden through subsidies or credit programs, more SMEs could access sustainable energy solutions and better address unreliable grid power issues. Now, my guest, Michael Alaiton, is co-founder of Power Now Pay Later, where he works with an amazingly dedicated team to deploy advanced technology to help individuals and small businesses with reliable, affordable, clean energy. As a result, driven professional with vast experience in product development, management and sales with support experience in information technology, Michael has worked with leading organizations that include Jai's Bank PLC, uh, Money Point Incorporated, Force Bank Nigeria, among others. He is an avid reader, a curious explorer, and a relentless dreamer who finds inspiration in the little moments of life, in the depths of nature, and in the connections he makes with people from all walks of life. Michael, many thanks for joining me on Business Insights. Thank you for having me. That amazing, amazing uh, uh, portfolio you have there. Let's talk about your dream. You, you are an avid reader and you uh, try to connect with people. But in all of your readings and um, all of your connection that you try to make with man and um, mankind as it is, you know, what would you say is the biggest challenge for MSMBs in Nigeria? Uh, I mean, the biggest challenges that we've actually highlighted is actually power. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, in my former world, in my former life, it was actually payment. A form, um, former, or you, or you were you not human before? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anytime you are not doing something again, okay. we we'll call it former life. Okay. Uh, so mm. yeah, uh, in, in, in the former sector that I was playing, mm. because I mean, I'm sure you'll be wondering uh, why fintech why did i mm. jump from fintech to green energy technology mm. uh, we saw that one of the major problems businesses are going to uh, are having mm. is lack of power mm -hmm. and i mean this inspiration this inspiration actually come came about from the fact that at a particular time when covid struck uh, i was working with the last fintech i was working with mm. and we had to work from home and that means that I was burning a lot of fuel. I was using my generator. The, the power supply was bad. Mm -hmm. And then I had to get a solar installation in my house. Yeah. That reduced my cost. And of course, I mean, cost of implementing solar is actually very expensive. It is. So, I mean, I, I looked at it and that's where I drew the inspiration to say, look, what I, I'm, I'm, I'm earning something very tangible and I'm, I'm even struggling to, to put that solar uh, installed in my house. Uh, mm. How would small businesses be able to to do that? So that's where the inspiration came about mm. to say, look, businesses, if household is suffering from this, of course, businesses will be suffering from uh, lack of power. And I mean, and that is why I, I came about the solution. Okay, fine. It is very interesting to note that, um, you know, power is the main issue for most um, small uh, micro businesses in Nigeria. But specifically, now, if you were really to say, is it really, really a better alternative in terms of um, economic um, factors? So for instance, now we're all aware of what the band A pay. I know I pay through my nose virtually every month to just get um, you know, enough power supply. And of course, the alternative uh, being uh, you know, PMS is about a thousand naira per liter in Nigeria. Uh, but most people would want to say that, uh, well, these uh, uh, sources are expensive, but solar is not about an arm and a leg. So is it a better alternative, really? Of course. I mean, and that's why uh, Power Now Pay Later is actually offering uh, some form of uh, credit line. I'll pull it like credit line where businesses can actually put a little bit of equity mm. and spread their payments over a period of time. Mm. Uh, this equipment comes with one to two years warranty depending on the product because uh, we have panels, we have batteries, we have uh, the inverters, right? And if you look at the economics, right? Uh, today, Band A uh, is paying like 120 
per kilowatt uh, mm. for, for, for electricity, and they are getting over 20 hours. Uh, I mean, the Minister of Power said two days ago that 40% mm -hmm. of Nigerians are getting electricity, and I want to believe out of that 40%, 80% are actually within band A band and a. probably yes. band B. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, I, I'm, I'm in band C or mm. band D, so I, I still use my, my system in the house. Mm. I still use my solar system to power like uh, like let's say 50% of the time I'm inside the house. So, uh, I mean, in, in the scale of economics, it's actually very, very, very good for small businesses to, mm. to tap into the, 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 solar, uh, the solar energy uh, provision uh, because it helps them to manage their finance. Uh, they, they wouldn't be worried about the capital cost because, I mean, uh, the cost of uh, fossil fuel, uh, mm -hmm. PMS and the likes, diesel, is actually going high. I mm -hmm. mean, we are, we are having issues with refining our products in Nigeria. So if you look at the cost, like an average, our least, our least product today on the platform is like 500,000 Naira, and that would power for, for nano small businesses. It's going to power their, their, their TV, the lights, and I mean, and they would be able to manage their finances because if you look at the the, the, the cost is mm. it's going to be minimal repayment uh, i mean businesses will be able to be paying us uh, as low as thirty five thousand monthly okay, but let's break yeah. it down let's yeah. really break it down because i want to understand for instance uh, let's talk go down to the nitty-gritty let's uh, imagine a barber shop somewhere on uh Ikeja area of lagos where they uh, pay band a and uh for instance, uh, how does he benefit, you know, from all of this uh, uh, solar power, uh, uh, solar powered energy, when he, for instance, uh, spends an average of, uh, let's say, uh, on fuel and NEPA, you know, he buys um, an average of about maybe uh, 10 liters of uh, fuel and uh, manages that with um, the uh, the ele Ikeja electric and power supply, you know. So would you say that um, if he were to move completely to solar, he would be able to meet the expense and also get um, in above his bottom line? Of course. I mean, and that's why I, I, I mentioned and I was trying to give an example mm. of uh, uh, the least products that we have on board today where uh, you, you are paying like 30,000 between thirty to forty thousand naira mm. monthly uh, in, in installation fee, and if I'm to buy uh, like ten liters, thirty thousand monthly. Yeah, that's monthly. That's about an average about a thousand, a thousand five hundred naira yes. every day. Yeah, every day. So okay. I mean, I can't, I, I can't use uh, one thousand naira fuel to mm. to power my to, generator no, or to all. to to make to make sales in a mm. day. And I mean, it's also very good that we talk about energy efficiency. I mm -hmm. mean. A lot of these uh, businesses are also trying to be energy efficient. Like mm. a barber today would actually want to have uh, rechargeable clippers. I mm -hmm. mean, because today barber just need uh, some form of lighting and yeah. fan in his in his environment. To cool so, the uh, yeah, to cool the hair. So he wouldn't want to be going for uh, equipment that will be consuming electricity. So mm. it's also very important that as we as we push out our product, we also push out our education awareness regarding energy consumption mm. uh, and efficiency and how and what kind of equipment and product that you need to be using. Let's talk, let's talk about the educational aspect, which is, which is what I think Nigerians still need to understand. Because uh, before now, most people, before this whole Band A uh, you know, dilemma, most people tend to just uh, put all their you know, devices on even when they are not um, um, in use. They tend to put on their TVs, all the fans around the air conditions, and um, the air conditioners are there. The, the freezers are all working at the same time, even when, you know, optimally they're not being used. So in terms of uh, energy cost and energy savings, do you really think Nigerians um, uh, need to have a sort of a mind shift uh, as regards on how they you know, use power because it is something that we need to talk about. Yes, I mean, I, I mean, you got me there, and I think I've been smiling. And <laughs> I mean, I will still talk about uh, the Minister of Power. I, I follow mm. him a lot. Okay. So I mean, I could remember the last quote where he mentioned that uh, 
Nigerians are very poor with uh, use of power and mm -hmm. electricity and I think it, it became an opera and everybody was actually calling for me for his head to say look mm -hmm. why would you tell me to put off my AC I want to put off my put on my AC at any point mm -hmm. in time and stuff like that but uh, honestly speaking I think uh, we need to understand how energy and, and, and energy consumption works mm -hmm. uh, it is actually not good for for probably households or businesses to put on equipment that are energy consuming when they are not using it. So mm. if I'm not in a room where there is, where, where I'm not staying, probably I need to put up the light okay. because I, I mean, you need to know how to manage electricity True. and power. I mean, uh, a couple of us have actually had the opportunity to live outside Nigeria, not okay. even to maybe the Western world, even some African countries. African countries. Yeah, I mean, a close neighbor here, who I believe uh, we sell power to, which is Benin Republic. You go there mm. and nobody's putting on light outside uh, their, their environment. Mm. I, I mean, growing up as kids, I can also remember that anytime, I mean, power supply is being held or is being brought back, mm. there are some particular houses that will look around and will be like, oh, there's light here. Oh, so mm. that means they brought the light because, I mean, their light is literally always on. Mm. So I think it is very important, I mean, as... Uh, as as an entity as as even also speaking to government to come around to mm. bring out sensitization programs uh to actually educate people on how to use mm. uh the, the power and uh, electricity in in their homes okay i think uh, we should even uh, continue from where you just um stopped you talked about government because right now the focus uh, you know over the uh, over the past few months have um, um has been to move from um you know pms to cng you know would we get to a time where the average household can actually be able to afford uh, solar-powered um, systems? Uh, because you talked about small businesses right now, but then, can we get to the extent where you know Nigerians can indeed see 24 hours of light, you know, without having to you know pay an arm and a leg? Yes, uh, I think yes, uh, we are going to get there. I mean. Uh whether whether there's power or there's no power even in developed countries like mm. for example in the uk uh there's still deployment of solar uh solar equipment and mm. let me be honest and be truthful solar energy installation is not cheap uh, it is it is, it is expensive and okay. and i'm sure it is due to the fact that it's just coming out right mm. so there, there there's there's there are not lots of um uh, manufacturing ongoing there but i believe with time uh, mm -hmm. it begins to spread uh, there will be a lot of competition in it which would definitely drive down the cost and i believe there will be intervention funds there are a lot mm -hmm. of uh, green energy inter intervention funds that would actually drive this cost lower and would allow homes, would allow businesses to have access to this. Uh, and when they have access to this, it, it will be intertwined with the fact that we have uh, energy from our national grid mm -hmm. and we also have solar and that in that way they are able to ma manage their, their finances and mm -hmm. the cost okay. so yes okay so let's talk about um practi uh, practicability right now for instance now i am listening you know to this program and you say you have um, some things nigerians would benefit from because uh it is actually to serve the general public as it is because uh, power is really, really, you know, essential, you know, to running businesses. Even manufacturers are complaining about how most of them are shutting down as a, res as a result of um, many of um, government's policy, including power. So how practicable is it? I have a business and I want to really convert to a uh, solar-powered uh, uh, system. What do I need to do? I mean, it's as simple as possible. We we have an app. I mean, uh, one of the mantra, one of one of our keywords is uh, accessibility, affordability, mm -hmm. reliability. So I mean, our app is as simple as that. You you go on it, uh, powernow.io. You you tap in, you pull in a little bit of KYC. You go through our product. You look at what and what mm -hmm. you want to power. Uh, right? It gets back to us. We we go through it and we can vet that. Oh, this person really exist this business actually exists in this particular do you do your location KYC? yes we do our kyc and i mean when you choose the particular capacity or product mm -hmm. you want uh we we get it approved and you pay us the the 
the equity that I mentioned, mm. what more or less like the upfront cost. Mm. Uh, in the next 24 to 48 hours, the, the, the engineers, an engineer is assigned to you mm. to come and install, and it's, it's installed, and I mean, you, you start enjoying So in power. less than 48 hours, you In have less than power. 48 hours, okay. you have access so, to power. Fine. That's really, uh, really uh, very interesting. So still more about um, solar powered because it's something that we need to really drive uh, very, very, very far in terms of uh, you know, advocacy and all of that. In terms of what government can do for support, uh, where can they really play? Okay, so uh, the government can actually pay, uh, play in, uh, let, let's even start from the part, the part where a lot of these equipment are being imported, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's bad that we are not manufacturing enough mm -hmm. uh, in Nigeria. So government can actually pay, uh, play in giving a uh, tax incentive to okay. some of us that are bringing some of this equipment. Yeah. I mean, because it's actually killing. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I think the second one is also in Forex. Uh, I mean, we, we, we hope for a better uh, financial um, stability in terms of our, our Naira to dollar because, mm. I mean, when we also buy some of this equipment, we, we pay in FX. Mm. So there, there has to be a form of stability in this. And, I mean, there are also different types of uh, intervention programs that government can actually uh, come in uh, in terms of uh, small, uh, medium, and micro businesses where mm. they can actually offer them uh, uh, green energy loans mm. uh, for them to come to some of us to actually power their business. So there are lots of ways uh, government can actually play in this. Okay, fine. Still talking about um, where government can play. Let's talk about regulation because I had um, a discussion or conversation with someone who is also into uh, solar power uh, energy and all of that. And over time, there have been much of like a, a proliferation of uh, people who claim to be uh, in the business of solar and uh, their substandard pro, um, uh, panels, substandard um, you know services and everything. So, how do Nigerians you know really? secure themselves or is it um, a thing of regulation but just how do we separate the shaft from the main weight? I mean uh, I, I, I get what you say uh, today we we have some of some some of little players that are mm. actually uh, putting out substandard products uh, in terms of maybe solar panels that would probably not charge well mm. uh, I mean uh, today, I, to the best of our ability, uh, when we import some of these our products, these goes through Sun and uh, SON, yes, SON okay. and they make sure that it's not substandard. But uh, I mean, with time, uh, I believe uh, we have an organization. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, like Power Nine is part of an African solar organization based in Rwanda, uh, who, who is actually ca coming with policies to mm -hmm. make sure that there's standardization uh, around mm -hmm. solar energy players. So I believe with time, there will be reforms where, uh, and, and it's, going to be, it's going to be spearheaded by the government, I okay. believe, uh, in partnership with private entities like us, mm -hmm. where we need to actually come up with framework Mm. That that would enable uh, uh, so solar installations or green energy deployments. So, okay. Yeah. So as we uh, round off right now, you know, what would you say to the average um, small uh, business owner who uh, feels that um, there's really not much to be done here in terms of um, business in Nigeria, considering the fact that um, they expend so much or almost. 300% over what they used to do in for power cost uh, this year alone. So what would you say to them? And um, what is the last word for solar energy in Nigeria? Uh, I mean, <laughs> what I just need to say to them is for them to uh, come to power now, for us to power <laughs> them and uh, make sure that uh, they have sustainability and their productivity is 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 back to life uh, and in terms of the future of solar in, in nigeria power now for example for us we intend to power within the next uh, year uh, more than ten thousand businesses so uh, we want to make sure that uh, our product is is an household product and uh, would would always uh, be here to help businesses to to get them back to their optimal productivity and uh, also able to manage their cost. So solar uh, in Nigeria in the next five years, where do you see the country? 
Uh, I mean, uh, it's going to be big. Uh, we have abundance of sun, uh, especially <laughs> in the north. So, mm. yes, uh, we are going to be one of those uh, countries when we go for climate uh, engagement to say, look, we have actually reduced a lot of uh, carbon footprint. So, mm. I believe uh, we should be ranked higher in terms of uh, solar adoption in, in a couple of years. All right, I must say a very big thank you to you for your time and all of the wonderful um, insights that you have provided in terms of, uh, you know, drifting or shifting from, you know, uh, fossil fuels to renewable energy. We do appreciate all of the inputs that you have um, brought to the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And that's the size of the show for today. I must say a very big thank you to you for sitting back to enjoy the show. My guest has been Michael Olaiton, co-founder of Power Now, Pay Later. See you again next time. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.